All right. Hi, Jenna. How are you? Hello, I'm well. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for joining me today. Ooh. We have a lot to cover. Yes. Um, I think because there's a lot to talk about with adolescents and all that and support. Yes. Yep. So I'm going to start with your bio. Okay. All right. Jenna Dalton is an intuitive healer, facilitator, teacher, artist, mother, musician, and empowerment coach. While she has many talents that can help a person move from insecurity to authenticity, currently she is mostly focused on meeting the adolescents where they are at and supporting their mind, body, heart, wellness. Yep. Is there anything you'd like to add to that bio? <laughs> uh, that's, that's it. I mean, that's it other than um, I feel like the thing I have to add is I'm also a little fun and crazy, so... <laughs> Yeah, which so is why you're good with the adolescents, yeah. right? <laughs> That's right. It's you have to have that crazy. Yes. <laughs> and not let them drive you crazy. That's right. No. That's <laughs> All right. So, you know, before we started this interview or before we got to this interview, I had reached out to a couple of your clients mm -hmm. to get some testimonials and mm -hmm. they came back with really great ones. And I wanted to share a couple of them here. Oh, okay. All right, so one says, my 14-year-old son says Jenna has helped him feel better about himself. This summer, he was feeling terrible in his body, especially his head. He was very angry at himself. Jenna helped him. She meditated, he thought. My son calls her a healing girl because she gave him a more positive mentality. Mm -hmm. And then the second one that I wanted to share is, what I have, have observed is that my teenager feels incredibly safe, seen, and held in her one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one sessions with Jenna and in her girls' circles. My daughter has mentioned that Jenna is intuitive and kind, that she teaches her how to set life-giving boundaries, and that she models good boundaries in turn. Hmm. My daughter comes out of her Jenna sessions lighter and freer, able to better articulate her feelings and needs, but also more joyful, like her emotional burdens have lifted. I mean, just reading that gives me goosebumps. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's, oh, it's nice to hear. <laughs> Doesn't everybody want that for their teenager? Yes. Especially now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's so needed right now. So much insecurity and mm, so much heaviness out there. Yeah. So to be able to offer this for your child mm -hmm. is wonderful. Yes. Right. And then actually the one mom that shared that about her daughter, she herself uh, mentioned that she equates you to like the auntie, the auntie that you never had, that you could yeah. go to and would um, be able to hold your stories and you know be there for you so yeah. that was really awesome as well. oh that's great that's pretty much you just encapsulated my my desire right there that's it i want to be the auntie that's it yes oh you, you have something go to jenna go tell jenna about it you know yeah yeah <laughs> and to have you sort of like yes. instead of like the 911 key it's the jenna phone yes <laughs> that's my hope <laughs> Yeah, that's what I want to provide. Absolutely. So that makes my heart happy to hear that. Wonderful. Can you share how you engage with the adolescents? Is this mm -hmm. phone call, Zoom, in person? Yeah, so I do Zoom almost entirely. So it just, it, I am, I'm totally willing to meet in person right now. It's just a little challenging. So um, if you're in the Portland area and we can find a way to do it that feels safe and good for everyone, that's fine. But for the most part up until now, it's all been Zoom. And I like to do video because I think it's important to be able to see their faces and for them to see my face and and meet animal and you know all of that so <laughs> and get a little bit animal like yes yeah it just it helps um to connect that that um sometimes you know there are I, it just depends on what the needs are there are certain teens that are really introverted and it and it's distracting and um unnerving for them to see themselves on video and then we just do audio so it's it's kind of what feels safe so um, I prefer video because I like to see the visual cues, but if that's not happening, then we just kind of go with what feels good. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. so normally you set up Zoom calls as opposed to FaceTime via phone? Yeah. I usually do Zoom. Yeah. 
And then do you request that the children, that the, that the adolescents, you know, find a space yeah. that's in their own room, private yep. and not uninterrupted mm -hmm. and, you know, even maybe put a fan on or, you know, just so that you feel like you can really share here. Nobody's going to hear you so that there's a, yeah. Make sure no siblings are coming in and out. That's a big right. one that we have to set that boundary. Like, and that's what, sometimes that's the first, the first family boundary is, you don't get to come into my sessions. These are my Jedi sessions. Yeah. <laughs> Using the force. Leave me alone. Do you, do you <laughs> recommend the teenagers set those boundaries? Yeah. Do you have them set those boundaries with their parents as opposed mm -hmm. to like calling the parents and be like, hey, I really need you to be on board with this and make sure that the sibling's not around. Right. If there was a problem, I might, I might intervene, but I do like them to, you know, it's just practice. It's, yeah. it's an, an, one, another place where they can practice. These are my needs. I'm going to communicate my needs to you. And this is, you know, and I can do it in a respectful way. And, oh my gosh, my needs got met. And so there's another success on the boat. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. I think that's so important these days. Yeah. Boundary setting. Yes. <laughs> So how long do these sessions usually last? They're about 45 minutes long. Okay. And um, we usually start with um, a meditation, like a grounding meditation to kind of bring us into a space. And then I will have them say their name for me so that we're really just present. And, and then we move, we move on from there. The sessions are really dynamic because it depends on what they're bringing. What, what I will bring is um, just a little healing clearing at the beginning. And then I'll say, okay, what are we here for? And then oftentimes they bring, and if they, if they're like, uh, I don't know, then I'll bring other things. But for the most part, that's actually never happened. <laughs> Cause as that's soon as I ask, they're like, well, I've got this and this and this and this, and do we have time for this? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so and just listening to this, you know, to, to your feedback as a parent, you know, a lot of times your child doesn't really share a lot, especially what I've learned on a workshop that I had with an adolescent expert, you know, who was saying how like boys tend not to share right? right and what was going around amongst the parents and the facilitator was like well you know do you have any suggestions as to how we can get our boys to talk a little more and actually the expert was like uh you know what I've got two boys they're like 11 and 14 and I can't get them to say a thing so if anybody else has any <laughs> suggestions you know yeah. so it's good to know that they do have things on their mind and it's nice to have somebody like you where mm -hmm. they feel safe and they don't feel compromised or judged at all yeah. speaking with their parents, you know? So right. it's nice to get that out there and help um, facilitate their growth yeah. and uh, emotional wellness. Yeah. And I make it pretty clear at the beginning that any, you know, anything goes, whatever you're saying here is, I'm not re reporting it anywhere. So this is, there's something safe about that for them too, as well. Sure. Um, and, you know, I had, I had many years of teaching in a classroom. So that gave me a lot of tools for how to, ask, you know, sometimes it's how you ask a question. If you say, how are you doing? You're going to get fine. Right. Right. But if you, if you say, Hey, could you tell me a story about a time that blah, 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 then all of a sudden they go. And then once the words start, then they don't stop. So right. it's, that's kind of the, the trick or whatever. One yes. of the tricks. Yeah. I have recalled people saying that before leading questions as opposed to closed ended questions. Right. And it's kind of hard to form our minds to ask those yeah. questions. It's an art. Yeah. It's definitely a <laughs> growing that's I'm always working on it too. So <laughs> all right. So I've jumped on your website and I really like how you have parent support. Mm -hmm. You know, under youth mem mentorship, you have a button for a book and empower parenting session for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you find that parents who have enrolled their teens in a workshop or session will also book themselves a session? Yes. And those, those sessions are so much more about, I feel like most of what, what happens in those sessions is that we come to a place of recognizing that their teen is not broken and there's nothing wrong with them. And, and that, I feel like that's what every parent needs to hear, right? Is just somebody to say, well, I actually spent time with your child and this is, this was my experience of them. So maybe they're experiencing this in school or they're experiencing this with their, even with their therapist, it's not going well, but here is a safe place. There's no expectations of them. So I'm experiencing them a little bit differently. And 
And that's kind of my, my motto is you're not broken. There's nothing wrong with you. Even if you've had a diagnosis, even if, you know, the, a lot of the um, empowering parent sessions that I've had have been with parents who are panicking because they've gotten a diagnosis of anxiety or depression for their child, or they've gotten a diagnosis of their, uh, they're on the spectrum, the uh, autism spectrum somewhere. And they're just saying, oh no, life's over. And what I bring to is actually this is fabulous because anytime something like that happens, it's a growth opportunity and your whole family is going to benefit from this and we go forward from that. So just that, so that's kind of what, what we do in those sessions. And I've noticed that it helps, it helps the whole dynamic. It helps the whole dynamic of the family. Cause then, you know, like it or not, when you're an adolescent, your parents are still the ones who are providing food and shelter and, and all of those things. And so when they're scattered and, ah, then that's, you know, even though they want to be really independent, there's, that's still really scary. And so being able to have parents who know how to ground, who know how to breathe through and be present with the situation helps a lot. So that's, those are kind of the tools that we work on in those, in those sessions. Well, and also these diagnoses, these labels that mm -hmm. certain people give to our children. Right. Mm, it happens early on sometimes, and it's before mm -hmm. adolescence. I mm -hmm. would imagine that it would be helpful to reach out to you for support once somebody tries to diagnose your child yeah. and gives them that label. Yeah. Then they could probably use your support yes. at that moment. You know, when your child is three or four or five or whenever you decide that somebody's looked at your child and thought that that child doesn't fit in the mold of the classic uh, public school system or right. classroom situation. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and I often to... talk about, I, I was really lucky to be able to study under Georg Kulewin, who, who wrote the book Star Children. And his book really changed, and this was early on, this was when I was in my 20s. And his book really changed the way I looked at all of that. Because in his opinion, he had, he lived in Europe and he had a whole school of children with diagnoses that he just would take those diagnoses and throw them out the window and say, they have such a gift for the world. And that, I mean, even now it gives me goosebumps to, to like, I get excited when you have a diagnosis. Cause to me, it's like the Percy Jackson series. Like that means you have a superpower, right? Like, that's all it means. You have a superpower. So yeah, you might not be able to fit into the mold. Congratulations. You have a superpower. And so we kind Correct. of move forward with that. Like it's a celebration as opposed to something shameful or scary. Right, right. Definitely different, but not wrong. Right. Um, it, it may be a hardship, but also we can do hard things. Right. And life is hard regardless. Right. <laughs> right. So the more tools you have for navigating that, the, the rough times, then great, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that yeah. absolutely reminds me of, I don't know if you've heard of, I think her name is Rachel Brown mm -hmm. out in Northern California, mm -hmm. right? She has a school that she um, works with children that have been labeled. Yeah. And she has all ages and man, I should remember the name of that school, but I know I'm um, blinking on it too. Right. But she, she has told stories about how, you know, a child will come in and be labeled autistic or ADHD. And, you know, she sees how, because of the label, the parents act a certain way, enabling the child to continue to act the way they do. But when they get to her place, she's like, no, no, you'll put on your shoes. Yeah. You know, and it's not a hard, you know, you will, but it's, it's meeting them where they're at, giving them the time and the space. And once you get that, they totally move out of that. It's true. And they it's meet true. their challenges. Yeah. And that's, so that's my goal in those sessions is we're going to move out of there's Again, there's nothing wrong with the situation. This is actually an empowerment opportunity. So yay, you know, and yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, my next question was about, can you tell me a little bit more about the family support you offer uh -huh. for parents with children that seem to be struggling in a traditional system? Mm -hmm. And I think we're already talking about it. We are, yeah. <laughs> so is there more that you offer? Um, you know, it's, it's so on an individual basis. So it really depends on what the need is of a family. But I think, again, I'm just going to reiterate the the piece that I will bring is the auntie piece. So you can come to me and say, oh my God, I have to do all this stuff, blah, 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 blah. and then we'll go, okay, let's take a deep breath and, and find out intuitively what's best for your family. Because any anytime you're getting um, a, a diagnosis from outside, they're looking at 
what they've studied and it's kind of like a formulaic thing, right? That's just the way that, that modern medicine is, is, is right now. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but what you have to do as an individual family is say, okay, so this is what we have going. And now we have me and you and you and you, and we're all individual human beings and we have to figure out the best way to move forward. And so that's kind of what I help with in those, in that time is, okay. um, in your, when you first started that sentence, you mentioned intuitive. And yeah. so when you work with families, do you try to tap into their own intuition and help them? Absolutely. That's almost all of what I do. <laughs> so yeah, that's, the, so that's the, um, you know, what it might look like is we're sitting, we, we can sit energetically as a, as a group and um we can just look at that and that's something those are the skills i've learned through lotus lantern healing arts is like okay i'm seeing a color and this color represents this and these are the words that are coming up with that color what does that mean to you all and then we can move forward from that and that that's so exciting there's because there's always a hit there's always a oh my gosh that's so weird i was just yesterday blah, blah you know like it just always connects and um so that's where that kind of like magical, intuitive, uh, I love working with that because it, everybody goes, oh yeah, yeah, I had a dream about that. Or, and then when, and then that's the wisdom that's living in there. So it's, I love teach, you know, I've, I always forget what that phrase is, but like give, give a man a, a meal and he eats what for one oh, day. Oh yeah, teach, teach a man to fish. A man fish or, yeah, teach him to fish. And so it's kind of, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, meditatively is um yeah sure i can clear the energy of your family and we can make a big i can do that for you and, and will that's great and now i can teach you how to do it for yourself yes. and then you can keep yes. going forward and and really be in touch with your own intuition so that when somebody says something you can right away go mm, that's not for me or yes that's actually really true for me and it's different for every family right yes. it's different for every Every belief system, every heart, every mind is different. So, yes, I get just so excited to talk about intuition because, you know, it's not something that's talked about a lot, but now in the more you access it or find these avenues where you can tap into your own intuition, mm -hmm. it just makes life so much better yeah. and more, more joy filled. More yep. intentional, I would say, you know, I had interviewed Katie Hamilton, who is a doula midwife, and she talks a lot about the birthing process being very intuitive, mm -hmm. you know, and she always puts um, the decision back into the woman's lap. What are right. your favorite things to do? What do you think? Yes. You know, so it's so great to have these teachers like yourself who have a, who have a gift, but it's not, this is my gift that I'm giving to you and I'm going to tell you how to do it. Right. It's no, I'm giving you this gift so that yeah. you too have the gift because yeah. we all have the gift. We all yeah. have intuition. Yes. Yes. And I, I'm a firm believer that in a family scenario, you are the only ones that know what's best for your family, right? I say this over and over again. I don't know what's best for your family. I just, I'll just tell you what I see, but yeah. you're the one that knows what's best for your family because you right. live in it 24 seven. You're the ones that are in that. So yeah. yeah. And just because you get like one intuitive thought doesn't mean it's forever. Right. It shifts. Everything oh, yeah. ebbs and flows. Oh yeah. That's the nature of it. That's the nature <laughs> of it. Trusting your gut. We talk a lot about that with, with the team. Yes. Trust your gut. Yes. Trust your gut. Mm -hmm. Yes. I love what you're bringing for adolescents specifically, right? So what do you see are the biggest challenges that face our youth today? I would say the biggest challenge that they are faced with right now is non-stop media, non-stop social media. They have so much coming at them, even if they don't have phones yet. I mean, it's just coming. The information technology age is coming at them and um, it's, it's overwhelming. I mean, it's overwhelming for me and I'm, a fully myelinated brain and 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 aware of setting time limits for how much time I spend on Instagram or whatever whatever it is um, that and it's interesting because when I work with 
with teens, they get mad at me when I initially when I talk about this because they love it. <laughs> they love social media. They want more of it. And so if I bring it like it's evil and bad, then they, they get very mad at me. But I say, just hold, just, you know, stick with me a little bit on this. And we talk about um, the algorithms and kind of the programming that's happening to make them feel like they're not okay. Yes. And so that they will buy stuff that will make them feel okay. And so we, t we actually talk about that a lot. And, and so that's a, that's one piece. And then the other piece that that's really living in teens today is how do I make more connection? How do I be a good friend? How do I navigate toxic friendships? That phrase comes out a lot, toxic friendships in our sessions. Um, how do I set boundaries in my relationships? How do I not feel overwhelmed by the world? Is, is those are, so those are the big, the big issues that come up. Um, yeah. I feel like what you're explaining uh, is a little bit of what they would call cyber civics. Yes. Right. In a Waldorf school, mm -hmm. they do some will cover cyber civics, you know, kind of yeah. in looking at the algorithms and yeah. social media analytically. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we do, talk, we do talk about that. And I would say, I mean, it's always changing. It just depends on the group that I have and, and, and who's with me. But there, there is an overarching feeling of, I don't like it when people are mean. I don't like it when people are disconnected. I want the world to be, um, I want the world to be whole. Like, it's almost as if they can see all the issues and they're like, what is the problem? Like, you know, that's kind of what the, what they bring is like, why is everything so messed up when there's so much potential for love and awesomeness in the world? And so why? Um, and one of the, I've been doing a lot of interviews lately just to kind of beef up my own, I'm always researching and picking brains of adolescents. And so I've been interviewing them. One of the questions that I ask is, you know, when I was a teenager, we were all obsessed with vampires and my older brother, they were all obs obsessed with like um, zombies and Shaun of the Dead type stuff. What's your, what are you guys obsessed with? And over and over they say superheroes. And I find that so interesting. So like as a metaphor, they're looking for someone. And if you think about Marvel superheroes, Usually the, the storyline is something horrible happens to them that mutates them in some way, yeah. but the mutation gives them a superpower and then they save the world. Yeah. And just, I mean, I get a goosebumps when I think about that as a metaphor that's living in our teens today. So I would say that that's, that's it. They're trying to figure out how to be superheroes in a, in a world that needs them, you know, and that needs that. So and yeah. your one-on-one -on -one sessions essentially draws out the superheroes in each of them. Right. It helps them just to see show up in the that. world mm -hmm. as your authentic self. Yes. You are a superhero. That's your superpower. Your yeah. authentic self is your superpower. That's it. Right. Right. Yep. Um, I want to talk a little bit about your website. Mm -hmm. It's called Acoustic Vitality. Yes. Why is that? <laughs> well, so it kind of came from this idea of I was experiencing as a musician the difference between live music and recorded music and performing um, just on a stage or in a living room as opposed to being on stage and plugged in. Uh -huh. And I personally have love the, the acoustic feel, feeling. I, I also love recorded music and, and electronic music, but the there's some kind of vibration that happens for me when it's acoustic and um i love that as a metaphor and so that's how i'm trying to come to my healing sessions is that i'm um i'm acoustically vibrating with you there's no plugins there's no it's going in here and going through all these channels and coming out here it's i'm right here with you present here we are and it's we're vibrating in the same space and then the vitality piece is just, um, I wanted, I wanted to go towards where I want to be and where I want people to be, which is just vital. You know, when you're, when you're healthy and aligned and happy, then there's just this vitality there. So that's what the acoustic vitality is about. 
Wonderful. I, yeah. because, you know, I look at that and I've come across where, you know, I have an activator on my site who does singing lessons and she tells mm -hmm. a story about how singing is a health modality, yes. right? And yes. music is, I think acoustic music is yes. a health modality, yeah. the different frequencies and vibrations. And so wow. when I jumped on your website, I thought, oh, is this what she's talking about? Because I know you do singing lessons as well, yeah. yes. right? Yeah. <laughs> and so it's like this acoustic vitality and the way you described it, yes, absolutely, that's what it is. It's this mm -hmm. vibration that you're bringing. Yes, yeah. And real vibration. It's not, yeah. it's not synthesized. It's a real vibration. So that's... <laughs> right, right. Oh, very, it's very cool. Mm -hmm. um, now also tell me about navigating deep water. Yes. So navigating deep waters was actually the beginning of my work with adolescents. And I started it years and years ago in person. We actually met in real life before COVID. And um, this was just an intention to offer a space for young women and people who identified with she, her, they. So anyone who identified with those. And I have gotten a little flack from people because I understand that we're trying to be very gender neutral in the world right now, which I am absolutely always working towards however i also recognize as a woman walking through the world it's harder <laughs> it's yes. harder to be a woman on the earth than it is to be a man it just absolutely is. in a and lot of needs ways to be recognized yes and it needs to be recognized and and so in these circles it's usually a four-part series it can be done in four days or four weeks or four months um i haven't done four years but um <laughs> it's basically focusing on the body the heart, the mind, and then who do you want to be? Like the integration of all those things. And so the, that's kind of how it's broken down. We do all sorts of, um, I bring in movement, music, art, um, lots of circle, going around the circle, answering questions. Um, we bring in meditation techniques, body sweeping techniques, um, all sorts of things that like, I really want the, I want the girls to leave with a whole toolbox full of how to navigate the deep waters of being a woman in the world. And so there's a lot of empowerment. There's a lot of talk about, um, you know, why, why do the statistics show that, that young women dumb themselves down? And once they hit middle school, what is that about? You know, they're like this with boys and then middle school happens. And all of a sudden there's this huge academic gap. What's going on? Um, and even just practical things. Here's some yoga poses for menstrual cramps. You know, we'll do we'll do stuff like that. Suggest, and we'll talk about moon cycles and what that means and how to navigate your moods and how to navigate your moods along with your girlfriend's moods and all of that kind of stuff. So that so that's what we do. It's very um, again. I often bring what whatever is living in the group. Cause the first group I had, it was all about self-defense. Like I even brought in, I happened to be giving ukulele lessons to a man who's amazing with self-defense. So we did a trade and he came in and did self-defense with them. And that was what they want. They were like, I want to kick butt in the world. Like that was the, that was how that particular group was going forward. And then this last group was all about friendship and how do I be a good friend and how do I tell a friend I don't want to do something and how do I deal with peer pressure so we that we focused a lot on that so it just depends on one group it was all about family dynamics everybody was having issues with family dynamics so we we focused a lot on that so it just depends on what the group is bringing but I have a little skeleton of a curriculum and then they fill it out with their needs awesome how Waldorf teacher of you Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what do you think is the ideal timeline for that? Since you do like either four days or four weeks, or four, what's your ideal? I think four weeks is four weeks. Nice because there's a, there's a space in between where they can journal, reflect, maybe do some kind of artwork and then bring it back to share the next, the next week. Yeah. Give them some time and I'll give them homework like this week notice you know, when you check out of your body and then do that body sweep and see what happens when you actually bring yourself or if you're having panicked thoughts, okay, I'm feeling panicked. So that means I'm living in the future. So how do I bring myself back here? So, you know, I'll give them little homework assignments and then we'll talk about it when we get back together. So, I mean, you do say that this is for women and I understand that women, you know, um, walk in the world a different way, but some of these practices that you're sharing with me, I feel like men could really use that because they have absolutely 
different way that they walk in the world. Yes. So, so that's, so that's why I have my guardians of the galaxy weekends. Cause the guardians of the galaxy weekends are for everyone and they're pretty much the same thing. It's just not as focused on female empowerment. You know, the, the navigating deep waters is really focused on how to really own yourself in the world and yeah. make space and take up space. Cause that's something yes, that yes. we kind of need to learn how to do as women. I think still 1000%. Yeah. And so the Guardians of the Galaxy weekends are for anybody and we this and it's a lot of the similar it's almost all the same tools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost it's all the same tools. Different. Yeah. You have a circle coming up. Yes. What is it called? When is it? Yes. Is so uh, the 5th of November, we're starting a teen revolution circle. So this is an hour and a half. It's basically drop in, sign up, come in. Um, you can talk or you can watch. It's four rounds of questions. And so what I, one of the things that's been that I've been noticing is there's this need for connection. Teenagers are wanting to feel connected, especially after these last two years. They're feeling a need for connection. They're feeling a need to talk about themselves to other people. And so this is just, it's really a fun, it's a process I learned through a restorative justice training. And it's a, just a series of prompts and storytelling. So basically you just go around the circle and if you don't feel like talking, you don't talk, you don't talk, you say pass. But the first round is just kind of a get to know you round. And then each set, each round gets a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper and we're just sharing stories. And so those, these are donation based. It's not, I'm not charging anything for them. You can donate what you want. It's just really what I noticed in all of my research gathering is that there is such a thirst, such a thirst for, I just want to hang out. I just want to have hang time. Yeah. So this is hang time. It is on zoom because I have kids from Nevada and New York and yes. Wisconsin and Missouri. Wonderful. And so how cool that you get to hang out. You're going to have yes. time with kids all over the country, maybe all over the world at some yeah. point, you know, so that's, and we're um, going to do that once a month. And so it's just wonderful. once a month, an hour and a half, it's donation based. And it's just kind of like a love offering for me. Cause I've just seen the need there. Um, it sounds like so much fun. Any intention to offer it to adults? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> I actually have so fun. Yes. Yes. The round robin <laughs> sounds awesome. In the works. It's in the works for sure. So. <laughs> All right. So are you going to be announcing these? So your first one is coming up November 5th and then consequently going forward once a month, is it going to be announced on social media or should they subscribe? Yeah. Social media or... and I'll have um, a place where you can sign up for my website as well. And then um, the, 12th to the 14th is our first guardians of your be the guardian of your galaxy weekend so that and that's a, um, a whole Friday Saturday Sunday weekend devoted to learning tools on how to just navigate the world in a really, really strong way and that's for all genders and creatures of all kinds. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Wonderful. I'll bring my yeah. dog. <laughs> dogs and cats are often in our circle <laughs> i think we've even had rats. energetically rats and birds as well yes <laughs> wonderful wonderful well, i'm gonna have to get this up and running quickly so we can you know market for the november Yay. thing yeah um is there anything else you'd like to add um just thank you so much for all this work that you do bringing people together in community i really appreciate that it's oh, thank you. Needed and wonderful, and um, I love looking at your website and seeing all the all the I call them light workers. I'm like, look at all these light workers in the world that are just doing really good things. And so I know I want that page to be filled, like yes. this global, <laughs> because there's so many, yes. right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so I'm sure you. we'll be talking again. Yes. And um, yeah, thank you for everything. Mm-hmm. Thank you.